The larger metropolitan area of Portland is what we classically refer to as a polycentric um, urban area. What that means is there's many places around the urban area that are denser nodes of employment and residency. And you can see this is from the vision plan of Portland for the year 2040. So they're moving towards a community that has multiple sub-centers and a much more dispersed but focused population. And they seem very comfortable pursuing that future. How do you deal with that from a mobility point of view? It's a classic spider web. You need to connect all of these dispersed centers within the urban fabric by linkages, and they're typically done using rubber tire vehicles. The Portland model is to interconnect these areas using light rail. North of the river, we see a tremendous growth in population that some people estimate within our lifespans and our children's lifespans will be in excess of a million people living in Clark County. So what do we know about the future of transportation across the Columbia River? Researching this issue, there's two documents that have been prepared using all of our money by the government re entities to study this issue, and they go back to the CRC project and the environmental documentation, which looked at the numbers of vehicles, the number of vehicle movements across the Columbia River. And then in 2008, the Regional Transportation Commission did a study looking at potential corridors in addition to I-5 and I-205. Here's a look at the corridors that were considered in that study and the CRC project, which I personally find very disappointing to witness your community experience that because it came on board and it, it commanded the attention of everybody for a couple decades to the exclusion of discussions about how to connect a polycentric urban fabric. And it just, just does not make any sense to have these multiple centers of activity scattered around the urban area and only have two crossings across the Columbia River. That's just, just not what you do when you're dealing with a polycentric urban fabric. So you have a toolkit of mobility options. On one end, the maximum capacity transit system that you have available to you is a two-car light rail train operating in mixed traffic. On the other end, it's conceivable that we could go back 150 years and cross the Columbia River on canoes. But in there, we have the available toolkit for mobility that you must cope with. The exception to that is that we are in the next few generations going to experience the reality of autonomous vehicles. And what that will mean to us is that we will have much more efficiency in our road network, especially the trunk routes, where some people say that when the majority of the automobile fleet is, is, is autonomous, it will increase capacity by 20 to 40%. The lanes can get narrower. There's no need for quite the spacing between vehicles. So that's what we have in the future that might be of a tremendous benefit to a polycentric urban fabric. So quick review of the, of the west side. Here's what the millions of dollars that we've spent studying the issue tell us about the future of mobility in the I-5 arena. Something like 130, 135 daily movements is what was experienced when these studies were done. These studies predict that in the year 2060, 50 years out, it more than doubles. It more than doubles. Liz was saying that 80,000 people crossed the Columbia River to find jobs in Portland. Say half of them are on I-5. That means 40,000 people out of 130,000 daily movements are devoted to the commute. That means that these two corridors have a tremendous interstate responsibility associated with the interstate highway system. 
Now, what I've done, I love big numbers. They mean nothing unless you can translate them into the reality of day-to-day -day life. So if you take that demand and you translate that into the number of vehicle lanes that would be required across the Columbia River during, to meet this future demand, you see down below the existing Columbia River bridge capacity. And then you see a discussion we had earlier about a West County bridge with one lane. That might represent to us what happens with the current plans of the CRC to increase it by one lane and deal with the impediment of the Rose Quarter. It comes nowhere near what is predicted to be the reality of our children's lives as they deal with this urban environment. We know we have this thing called the Portland Dependency. We know we have a community in North Portland that shares the I-5 corridor with us. We know that whatever, and it's a growing community, it's going to see development in the future. So what we see as a need across the Columbia River increases as we get into Portland. The numbers tell us it's a 25 to 30 lane freeway. But then there's the notion of rail. We all know that light rail is a major component of Portland's future. What does that mean to us if it were to be extended across the border? It basically means to a transportation planner that in the year 2050, 2060, we're talking about this light rail system needing to move 9,000 people in the peak direction, the peak hour. That's a huge number of people. And if we're looking at the interstate highway system as having the responsibility of carrying interstate freight, we know that the, sh that the pushers get most of the commuters into this system. But this is what you're going to have available in Vancouver with light rail for capacity. A deficiency or 800 people per peak hour because North Portland and the yellow line is going to grow with demand to meet the capacity of light rail. So I can't say in all honesty, even though I'm a great proponent of transit and I've designed hundreds of, of almost a thousand stations, mass transit stations around the world, including Washington Park, the deepest station you have in Portland. They asked me if I would figure that out for them years ago. It doesn't provide nearly what's needed to do this job. The need is off here. That's what, if, if rail, rail were to be serious, that's what people would be talking about. So I looked around the world and I found an example. What that translates <laughs> into is about 1,200 people per train. And the train is designed for 300 people standing and seating. So where in the world do we find a two-car train that has 1,200 people on board? Well, well, there are examples of that around the world. But I don't think that's what people envision the future to be. So, so really, the question is, what kind of vision is this? And remember, this is a polycentric urban fabric where you have to connect all these different centers of activity. So funneling people onto a limited number of corridors is, is, is not a good thing to do. And, and certainly the notion of rail is not that. Okay, so there's going to be a presentation on the potential for a west corridor, a new arterial crossing that would connect up to Hillsboro with Vancouver. If you do that, and you do deal with the, with the uh, Rose Quarter fix, and you do add additional lane in each direction to I-5, then you get to the point where you're beginning to reach that capacity. But remember that red is going to fall on the burden of the commuter, not the interstate freight movement. So that means you're going to have to have a transit system evolve in the I-5 corridor that meets that demand. And so the only thing that makes sense in the toolkit of transportation is a bus rapid transit system. And that's going to have to evolve over the next 30 to 40 years for I-5 to be viable, even if you build that corridor out to Hillsborough. And so it has some technical requirements associated with it. The major problems are not the lane over the river. The major problems is how do we feed it from the north and how do we disperse that movement to the south. 
is a complex issue that's just not a lane for buses. And so some solutions there. I'll move through it real quick. Oh, 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 so a potential strategy for the I-5 corridor that may make sense is construct a new west corridor. Bring that up to Hillsboro. Maybe use that for a bus rapid transit system. And, and, and do something with downtown Vancouver because it's downtown Vancouver because it's struggling. And I know that in their heart, they want that light rail system running down the streets of downtown Vancouver to, in, to incentivize development. And so that does make sense, but it's definitely not a mass rapid transit component that's, that's needed. Um, and then replace the I-5 bridge. It's going to have to get done and do it, though, after you've reached some sort of a capacity agreement with Oregon as to what the I-5 and I-405 throughput will be through Portland. Any investment you make north of the river without that interlocal agreement in place is money at risk. And then you're going to hear about a tunnel, which is this marvelous technology that we can now employ. I just finished a project which, with an underground freeway going under the Bosporus across, across Istanbul, in which powered through it, did it quickly, caused a bit of a problem on the historic peninsula because you have a roadway connection. But you're going to hear about that. It's kind of a neat technology. Um, um, implications. Still have the problem of downtown Portland throughput. You can't just throw cars at Portland because they're not going to build the capacity through 405 and I-5 to deal with that. It doesn't necessarily deal with the polycentric need of connecting to the communities to the west. Um, it's costly. Seattle experience suggests something like a billion dollars a mile. Um, and, and, it, and it does have an implication for arterials north of the river, wherever it daylights. And then there's something east, in East Clark County, in I-205, that corridor. What they're predicting there is almost a doubling of the number of vehicles in the next 50 years. Uh, when I say vehicles, if it's say 261 vehicles, that translates into something like 340,000 people, <coughs> which is more than one person per vehicle. Um, and so here's what we have. We have an existing capacity in the 205 bridge. That's the demand predicted. The red is the deficiency. We can hear about the East County Bridge. It lays in nicely because it can then move up and cope with the future through 2040. And if we add another lane of I-205, that is a corridor with a new east corridor that can be viable long term. And that's much more easily achieved than trying to enter into an interlocal agreement with Oregon to push an arterial out to uh, Hillsboro or another community because just the inherent resistance they have to the automobiles. <coughs> Um, and then the other interesting aspect about that is you all know that East County, there's beginning to be more of a stronger north-south spine, urban spine being developed, and it's a vision to be south of the border as well. So the ability to coordinate that from a, a governmental point of view and interlocal agreement should be much easier than that I've been told it is because it's self-evident to me. And then so uh, it's possible to fast track a new East Corridor multimodal bridge, uh, in, invest it to be able to accept this notion of BRT, uh, take that notion of having to create in environments in which people will move around by buses a little bit more easily and build that into the, into the way that the urban environments evolve. Uh, work with ODOT to establish an ultimate capacity of I-205. Again, it makes no sense investing north of the river in I-205 unless you have an interlocal agreement on capacity south of the border. And then, um, and just mature those connections. And so, you know, there's going to, you're going to hear multiple choices. This is all coming from the private sectors list said no public involved in money spent on this, but hundreds of thousands of dollars invested by the private sector. And you know, I always have to say, consider the neighbor to the south. 
no more cars. What's possible in today's political climate? And this is the stuff that falls on the shoulders of your politicians. And they desperately need support from the public arena to make something happen.